This video is brought to you by the supporters on Patreon. Hi guys, I'm here with a video showing you how I styled or made my augmented somber wig. To start off, I'm taking this sheer stretch like skin colored fabric and pinning that onto the wig head. This is going to come in handy when I am gluing on like new wefts as well as it will help me recreate the front hairline. Once I have the wig pinned down, I go ahead and cut off the extra fabric that's hanging there just to kind of get it out of the way so that I can now work with the wig. And to start off, I am parting the wig into like where I want her braided section to be and where I want the undercut section to be. The undercut is on the left side of her head and the braid is on the right side. Once you have it all divided, go ahead and take the section of hair that's going to become the braid and just pin that out of the way because we will get to that later. To start off, I'm going to just cut off all of this hair on this side and it's going to look god awful for like the longest time, bear with me. Um, but make sure you keep all the hair that you're cutting off and cut it off in long strips because we are going to use that to create the wefts later to fill in all the holes. You can see a lot of the hair underneath, of the net underneath, just everything. It reveals everything, so you're going to have to add in a lot more wefts coming up and I will show you a quick and easy way to do that. But first I wanted to kind of get everything at the length that I wanted it, so I'm taking these shears with a guard on it and just going through the wig so that I can kind of see how much it is showing. Now we're creating the wefts. To create the wefts, I lay down a strip of hot glue and then I lay down some of the hair that we had cut off onto that hot glue and apply another strip of hot glue on top and then sandwich it between two pieces of parchment paper parchment paper or wax paper will make it really easy just to pull the glue off of and this hot glue dries like super fast so you literally put the glue, put the hair, put the glue, smush it, lift it up, and peel it out. Obviously the hair is not as long as what we cut off. I'm cutting those into tinier sections about the length that I feel I will need it to be. It's okay and probably safer to cut it a little bit longer than you think you need it to be just because that gives you some leeway in case you mess up and you don't have any wefts that are way too short. And this is what I basically did for like a couple hours because I needed so many new wefts. Obviously there are nicer ways of creating wefts like sewing and a bunch of- I'm sure there's other ways besides just sewing. But this is what was quick and easy for me and it worked and it held up. So if you just want to make some quick easy kind of like just get it out of the way wefts, this is the method to use. It's really important to smush it down and smush out that glue because you want to make sure the hot glue is getting attached to you every hair in the weft that you are making, otherwise you'll have a bunch of loose hair start falling out. Once I have some wefts made, I go ahead and just clean up the edges because when you smush out the glue, it makes this big soppy pile of glue and I'm just cleaning that up to get as little bit of a glued end as possible just so that it will look nicer and a bit more natural um, than if you just saw a bunch of hot glue pieces sticking out of your wig.
All right. So next up, we are going to start gluing in all of the wefts that we just made. Because this is a styrofoam wig underneath, I didn't want the glue to eat through it or eat through it as much as it would if I applied the glue directly onto the wig. So instead, I'm applying a strip of hot glue onto the wefts that we just made where the strip of hot glue was before and then placing that onto the wefts in any spots where it needs to be. Make sure when you are placing the wefts down that you are putting it under hair, like under hair that's already there to hide the, the ends of it. You don't want any of the ends that you're gluing down showing through because then you can tell it's a wig. You need hair to cover that little bit. So just basically make sure there's a bunch of wefts in there and everything's real close together. You also want to make sure that you are gluing all of the wefts in the direction that the hair is going. Because if you like glue something upside down or sideways, it will be super noticeable and harder to blend. Every once in a while, I go through the hair again with the razor or shears or whatever they're called and then just like, you know, cut everything to the length that I want it to be to make sure that there's no underneath like the wig cap part showing through in case I need to add more wefts. Now I'm creating this front hairline because this wig is not designed to, you know, like be pulled back in a ponytail or to be super short because it will show all of your hair, especially any hair on the sideburn sections or like just too far forward compared to it. The long hair is supposed to hide all of that. But since there is no long hair anymore, I have to create a custom hairline and that's what I'm doing here. I'm gluing on some extra wefts down the front part and just extending that hairline a lot. I will trim it down as needed in a little bit, but yeah, basically I'm making a sideburn section almost, but not like full sideburns. Now here I'm just trying it on real fast to see if I need to add any more hair or where I need to cut away some hair and I'm also going through with the razor and trimming everything down to the length that I need it to be because there were some obviously super long parts in there. Now that it's about where I want it to be, I'm going ahead and beginning the blending process. And I can't really tell you exactly how to do this because it's a lot of just looking at things and chopping away hair wherever it looks too choppy or like blunt or straight across and trying to taper the ends. And it's just, it's something that will just take a long time to do and you just have to keep stepping away, looking at it, and cutting away hair anywhere so that it looks too obvious that it's a wig or just poorly cut. So basically what I'm doing is just making sure that all of the ends are choppy 
like all of the ends of the wefts are choppy rather than a straight across cut because this will help it blend into the next layer. And I will also take a pair of thinning shears here in a second and cut up the ends that way as well to make sure that it's extra choppy. Basically, you just want everything to be super choppy because that will help it look blended. And if you have any straight lines, you want to get rid of that because that's what makes it look super, you know, fake and bad. Alright, so I've let down the braided section, now I'm gluing in some extra hair over on the side back part here because the weft, or the, not the weft, the net was showing through. And the way that I am putting this in to kind of help cover the, the fact that there's a weft here is putting it in reverse, basically. I'm putting it in so that when I glue the hair down, it goes towards the undercut section. This way, when I pull it back towards the braid section, the hair from the weft will just cover the top part of itself. And I don't have to worry about trying to cover it with another weft or more hair or anything like that. Here I am going ahead and creating a giant puppy tease in her hair. Okay, well not too giant, but I'm definitely teasing the top of it because I do need some volume at the top here. So I have pulled away the top layer of hair that's going to cover the giant knot that we're about to make in the hair. Um, and now I'm just teasing and going at that under layer of hair to make sure that it has the volume I want. You need a lot of hairspray for this. And if you go ahead and take thinning shears to the layer that you are teasing, it will help create some of these short hairs in there that will help the hair knot better. Just a tip. And now I'm beginning to throw the bangs into there as well. I am teasing those little by little and flipping them kind of back towards the hair so that they're a bit out of the way rather than like directly in my face.
Next is just braiding the hair. I'm not really going to do a tutorial on how to braid hair. There are probably plenty of videos out there on YouTube of how to do a basic braid, so go ahead and do that. Next up, I'm just adjusting the bangs again to kind of flip that back towards the braid a bit more and get it more out of my face. And as well as adding these little strings of hair that she has. She has like these three distinctive strands of hair that kind of hang differently than the rest of her bangs do. So I'm going ahead and creating those by just grabbing a couple of thin strands and spraying that with a lot of hairspray and then styling it the way that I want or need it to be. This is a little extra that I decided to do, and this is because I really hated how this blonde color looked on me, this yellowy blonde color that she has. So I went through with a brown chalk pastel and a paintbrush and just dusted on some you know, of this brown color onto the roots to make it look like there was a bit of regrowth and it kind of just helps the wig look a little bit more natural and also gives it a little bit of depth or dimension. So I just do this throughout the whole hair anywhere there's, or there looks like it would be, you know, growing from the scalp. So a lot of the area and the under part has just brown dusted out through all of it. And then the part where the undercut part ends and the braided part begins, that also gets shadowed. Her braid also has just, I wanted to add some shadow into it as well because it was looking kind of flat. So I took a darker blonde for the braid and just added that to these middle sections here to kind of give it a little bit more dimension and whatnot. And this is how I finished off the wig for the headpieces because I will mention that real fast. I just glued those directly onto the wig because that was the easiest way to keep them in place. But yeah. I hope you guys found this video helpful, have a lovely day, and thanks for watching! Check out my other videos too if you're looking for more cosplay-related tutorial things. Bye!